Um, so we going through market structures and we had a basic introduction to different market structures. And then we discussed about the perfect competitive market and their characteristics. So why it is important for economy and its importance in terms of resource allocation, how it is important for consumers as well as producers. And we try to uh, characterize important elements of competitive markets. We learn there are many buyers, many sellers, and no one can influence on the price of the product. And the price is basically determined by the demand and supply. So which is, um, uh, which is we call actually, the, like when we call about the price system or the price mechanism or the price, in price um, sorry, the competitive market, uh, which is an idealistic market, <clears throat> but um, it's always good to have an idea that everyone, uh, it is a kind of a hypothetical market. So in the real world, we won't see perfectly competitive market, but at least we have, you know, um, the closer, the markets which are closer to the perfect competitive, the perfect competition, though the pure competition is not exist, uh, still we have some near perfect competitive market in the world. So competition is the, the best organization for um, industry. It, because it has many advantages uh, for the society, economy, and basically for consumers and producers. So these are the two main economic agents we're talking about. And the competition always ensures um, better use of resources because a price provides the um, signal uh, in order to um, you know, allocate resources, whether to uh, grow rice on a particular land or putting up uh, you know the building or commercial uh, building in a land is determined by the price so if something offers a higher price uh, the particular resource should allocate to that venture which produces or which brings the highest price so thereby it ensures efficiency in resource allocation. So these are the properties that we discussed uh, in competitive market. <clears throat> now we have uh, monopolistic competition. So this is the second type of a market structure we're going to discuss uh, today. So at the outset, uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, this is next to the perfect competitive market. So this is the second type of market, which is predominate in the, in, the, in the industry or in economies after the competitive market. So the, per, or the monopolistic competitive market is the second largest or the second prominent type of market next to the uh, perfect competition. The important uh, elements that you may need to know about this uh, are, to, are to be discussed in later in the, in the discussion. So <clears throat> we know that uh, we have, we have um, many or the infinite number of, infinite number of uh, firms in the market. So in, in, the, in the competitive markets, and in fine a number of uh, so the consumers as well. In monopoly, we know that there are there is only one producer, and uh, there are so many consumers. So the competition and the monopoly uh, relies uh, in the two extremes. Of uh, give me a second.
sorry about that uh, people so can you still hear me am i audible to you yes okay cool right okay so let's let's continue our discussion uh, sorry about the interruption um well uh, when it comes to uh, monopolistic competition i wanted to emphasize that it is it lies between competition and the monopoly uh, in the um, in the continuum of uh, power exist in the uh, different market structures so the monopolistic monopoly market has more power to the uh, producer and the competition has no power to anybody or the producers has no power but the monopolistic competition is something like it's a mixture of monopoly and competition. So monopolistic competition hence has the characters of both monopoly and the competitive market. And it in terms of you know the power exists among firms. Um, so the firms has certain you know a power to influence on the price. Right, so it has certain power to influence on the price, uh, but because of there's because there's many <clears throat> producers or many firms exist in the market, uh, it has you know the competitive character as well. So the people would you know, the the firms would compete for uh, marketing or selling their uh, product, but these products are not homogeneous like in the competitive market, so they are uh, differentiated. And also we need to know that uh, there's few barriers to enter to this uh, market. So similar to competitive market, we learn there, uh, when there's a competitive market, um, anybody or any person or any firm can come into market or can come into industry to start the production. For example, take, take vegetable. So any farmer or any producer at any time can come into uh, uh, production, ve vegetable production. Any rice farmer can any time come into uh, rice production. But in the agriculture as well, I need to emphasize that. So there are uh, kind of, um, a differentiated product exists. For example, suppose uh, strawberries, for instance, and some cut flowers, for instance, like gerbera and uh, sort of uh, plants. Um, so these products are specific and, and there are technologies involved. So such products, of course, takes the form of monopolistic competition. And another example is, um, you know, the bell paper, which is produced in uh, greenhouse conditions or the net house conditions. So they are, these products are different uh, from the generic uh, product. Uh, so the bell paper, we need specific technology and we need um, specific environment. We need specific growing systems. We need a specific climate. So therefore such products, or the, the producers producing such product um, can be considered as uh, monopolistically competitive because there is a differentiation in the product. So, so these are some examples that we can uh, take from the agriculture sector. And also uh, in entering to such production is not easy. So as rice farmer cultivating rice, uh, it's not such, it's easy to, you know, enter into the strawberry production or enter into the bell paper production. So, because um, there are barriers to enter, these barriers could be in the form of, you know, the technology or the capital cost, you know, uh, greenhouse production uh, needs um, huge investment cost or the capital cost to put up uh, structures or the greenhouses. So therefore it's not easy for the people to uh, go into that industry and also the specific knowledge. So it needs specific uh, knowledge to involve in um, bell pepper production or strawberry production, particularly in our, our context, or Sri Lankan context. 
<clears throat> if you look at the characteristics of uh, monopolistic competition, we need to know uh, similar to competitive markets, we have many, many sellers or the many producers and they work as competitors. And not unlike competitive market, we need to know in the monopolistic competitive markets, the products are differentiated. So they are not similar products. So if we take, for example, uh, some industrial product, for, for example, the perfumes you spray on your body or the types of soaps uh, you use and the detergents you use, right? And curry powder from agriculture and food sector, for example, the curry powders you use. So you might see, so there's different brands of curry powder and different, uh, you know, the qualities involved, right? So even though we, you know, um, um, use curry powder available in the market, so though they are, you know, the serve, the serve for the purpose of uh, pungency, hotness, um, these products are different. So we know some products are more quality than the others, some products are less quality than the others. So there's a difference in qualities. So that is what we, mean, we, we, we mean by product differentiation. It's not the generic um, chili powder, or it's not the generic curry powder that we buy from uh, the shops in wholesale or, uh, you know, in loose quantities. <clears throat> Most of the curry powder or the chili powder products available in the market are well packed and they have a brand name and their brand name reflects some quality differences as well. So therefore, the curry powder available in the markets or the supermarkets are not all same. So they are differentiated product. So the prices also we see different in uh, product, right? So you might see the, the so many brands of uh, curry powder and chili powder in the market in different sizes and different products or different brands. Um, so these are examples of uh, agriculture and food sector uh, uh, products which comes from monopolistically competitive market. And uh, basically, uh, these markets have multiple dimensions of uh, competition. So therefore, it is very difficult to analyze. So the, the, the farmers or the producers do not only for the, uh, do not compete, compete only for the price. So there's competition for many other aspects as well. So there's a quality competition and there's an advertising competition. So multiple uh, dimensions of uh, competition involved in such uh, monopolistic competitive industries. Uh, but compared to uh, or, the, or similar to uh, competitive market, uh, we must know that uh, there's no uh, such barriers to enter to this market. So everyone, anytime, can come into uh, industry. For example, if somebody, someone of you, you know, wants to uh, process curry powder or you know um, chili powder, so it is it is possible for you to start such a business, right? It is it is it is uh, not that difficult to start. But some cases you may have to face a huge capital cost or the sunk cost. Otherwise. Uh, in terms of product, um, that's not a difficult one to handle. Right? So when it look into uh, you know the um, the output, price, and profit of monopolistically competitive markets, um, they have uh, the character of price and the character so the, the type the amount of output and the profit. It, they behave like a monopoly, right? So monopolists have the ability to, you know, control their production and they have the ability to control the price. And also their ability to control output and the price uh, 
um, automatically they get the control to, um, you know, uh, control their, uh, automatically they get the ability to control their profits as well. So this is very futuristic in competitive market, sorry, uh, the monopolistic market. And in the monopolistically competitive market as well, you see uh, similar properties of firms' ability to control output, control price, and control profit. We didn't see a, such a character in competitive market. So the competitors never have the ability to control the output price and the profit because everything is determined by the market. So the producer has to sell whatever the amount they have at the market price. But when it comes to monopolistic competition, a producer has some power uh, to control the output he released to the market. And also the, the he has the power to determine the price. So this is different to the competition. In, in terms of determining the price, in terms of determining the uh, output, monopolistically competitive firms works like monopolist firms. So they have the ability to uh, maximize profit and always uh, the marginal cost remains below the uh, price of uh, pr the price faced by the monopolistically competitive firm. We learn in competitive firm, a marginal cost would equals to the uh, price, but that doesn't happen uh, in the monopolistically competitive market. So I will um, show you up this uh, using some of the uh, illustrations uh, for you to easily comprehend in the later of this presentation. Um, it is important to know that um, like perfect competitors um, in the monopolistic competition as well, in the long run, the profits can, you know, um, become zero or the normal profit. So, but in the low, in the short run, there's large possibility uh, for the firm to control output and the price. And in the in the long run, um, with the entry of new firms, the profits declines gradually in the monopolistically competitive markets as well. Because uh, when there when when there's since it is competition competition also involves, and since there's no barriers for new firms to enter to the production, uh, in the long run. When more firms come into the uh, come into play in the industry, when when more firms start production and marketing in a particular industry, um, the the prices would definitely go down because consumers face many options. If you recall your memory to this uh, chili powder case or the curry powder case uh, about you know. Um, 10, 15 years ago, or about 20 years ago. So did you have, um, you know, the packeted um, curry powder and chili powder in the markets or the retail shops? If you, if you recall your memory, so if you can remember. So were there such products in the market about two, de two decades ago? So when we were a child, so I can't, I couldn't remember that we had, you know, the packeted uh, chili powder, packeted curry powder in the market, but uh, somewhere around 90s, so I can't remember exactly, actually, 90s or 2000. Uh, so during that time, I remember some couple of products uh, came to the market, but later, at by today, there's many, many brands of... Uh, chili powder or curry powder mark are available in the markets. And also similarly, the, the types of soaps, and you know, it's not agricultural product, but if you recall your memory um, on types of soaps we had when we were a child, 
there was only little like um, Unilever, mostly the Unilever products, but later there were so many um, other products came into the market. And similarly, you just think about um, uh, processed meat products, right? So the sausages or something like that. Uh, we haven't had so many uh, brands, but later uh, there are so many uh, product types. Right. Um, it is another important character of a uh, monopolistically competitive market uh, where um, um, the, the pricing process, uh, the pricing process that occurs in the monopolistically competitive market is more similar to the monopolist and uh, marginal cost equal marginal revenue um, sets the price. But in the monopolistic competition, um, also we need to know that there's a competi he is a competitor as well. Uh, therefore, um, the marginal revenue of the firm could decline with the entry of new firms um, and uh, when, 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 when new products or the uh, new firms comes into the market, the prices could go down. So therefore the marginal revenue of the firm uh, can be so decreased. So four basic uh, distinguishing characteristics of uh, monopolistic competition involves like as we discussed, there are many sellers, differentiated product, and multiple dimensions of competition, and easy entry and exit. So these are the key features of monopolistically competitive market. You need to know um, there are many sellers or the many firms or many producers. And when it comes to product, product is more differentiated they're not uniform or they're not homogeneous, they are differentiated product. And also uh, the competition is not only involves in you know, the uh, price, it involves in quality, it involves in advertising, and it involves in you know, the cost reduction or various other ways of competition exist in the monopolistically competitive market. And there's always, more liberty to enter uh, monopolistically competitive market. So anyone at any point uh, can start a production in the monopolistically competitive market. So when we say uh, the, 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 there are many sellers or the many producers, so <clears throat> what, what do you mean by this is important, right? So, when there's many sellers, it adds to the competitive uh, character. So it adds to the competition. So more sellers means, or the more producers means, obviously a competition is being created among uh, producers. So there's more producers and this would lead to more competition. And on the other hand, when there's more producers, it makes firms difficult to, you know, form collusions or the, um, uh, what we call the uh, producer or the producer associations. Since um, in, the, in, the, in the oligopoly, we will learn this thing. Um, when there's few, producers, there's a high chance to make conglomerates or the, um, you know, associations of them. And these associations would take the power to uh, reduce, sorry, um, determine the price. Uh, similar scenarios or similar incidences cannot take place in the perfectly, comp sorry, monopolistically competitive market because there's many sellers exist in the monopolistically competitive market. And 
this all or the all the firms producing the monopolistically competitive market works independently and it doesn't this, this depend on the production or the output of the others so they are independent right but we need to know that uh, the products of monopolistically competitive market are differentiated right so this adds to the uh, presence of many uh, sellers adds to the uh, competitive aspects of the monopolistically competitive market and product differentiation on the other hand gives monopolistic aspect to the monopolistically competitive market it's something like this like suppose um, a producer who produces a specific type of uh, noodle or specific type of chili powder or specific type of uh, sausage or yogurt so when this yogurt is non substitutable or the when it has many specific characters they can be worked as monopolist and they can determine um, the product or they can place the product difference to the other available products it's something like this uh, take an example from the, uh, the the mobile phone industry and you see there's apple phones uh, samsung oppo motorola uh, nokia sony so there's many types of phone brands are there phone is the same product which means it allows people to you know communicate text and nowadays they are more sophisticated in addition to you know making basic phone calls you can take photographs right so you can uh, take videos so there are many other functions also there are many other associated functions in the mobile phone but think of you know um, two types of mobile phones for example samsung and uh, apple and with basic required functions like uh, ability to take videos and camera um, phone uh, so the uh, ability to call so these are fundamental uses of mobile phones. So despite a phone of same generations offers same functionality, uh, their prices are different according to the brand, right? And we know that Apple phones fetch always a higher price compared to the Samsung. Why it is that? It is because of the differentiation of the product. So the Apple product are different to Samsung product. Maybe, you know, whether even though both offers the facilities to video or facilities to take pictures, the picture quality could be different and the battery life could be different, right? And the, the you know, uh, ability to protect personal information could be different so likewise services available in apple phones are um, very different compared to the similar type of uh, samsung phone so this product differentiation uh, leads to differentiations in the prices <laughs> And also, apart from the product differentiation, uh, these companies or the producers, you know, um, uh, involves in promoting their product by means of, you know, advertising. And advertising would lead to uh, convince consumers about the particular type of product. So the advertising is the tool Basically, the monopolistically competitive industry 
used to convince buyers of products. So they advertising convince uh, buyers about different products and their differences and uh, their qualities. Likewise, um, advertising always enhances the market share or the amount of buyers uh, who buys a particular product. However, so how long advertising can be used as a tool for these firms to uh, promote their products? That is up to the point where, so their marginal benefits of advertising uh, ex exceed, so the equals the marginal cost of advertising. So advertising always adds an extra cost to the company, right? But they cannot keep advertising going on for over and over. So they may have to decide at some stage, okay, so what is the best, um, uh, I mean, the, the best level of advertising for their products. So this is determined by the cost incurred for advertising and the associated returns uh, from advertising. So this, bo this board uh, jointly decide the appropriate level of advertising for a product. So we talked about uh, there's uh, multiple dimensions of competition. So these are the, uh, those, these are those dimensions of competition. So the first dimension is the differentiation. So the products are differentiated and different products uh, makes uh, they are the, the products of firms competitive. The another dimension is the quality. So the products in the monopolistic and competitive market are perceived to have different qualities. As we discussed uh, using examples of mobile phones, we know some of the some of the mobile brands are much better in their quality, like um, Apple phones, so they are much better in their quality. And also, another point of uh, competition is the advertising. So advertising involves advertising of promoting uh, products of monopolistically competitive firms would lead to competition among uh, market competition among market participants or the producers. Another type of competition is uh, provision of services. In monopolistically competitive industry, uh, the firms selling products or the services to the customers, on the other hand, involves in offering other services. For example, um, uh, you know, the uh, repairing services or delivery services or maintenance services. Uh, something like that. So they involve in uh, various other service provisions as well. So take for example, uh, automobile industry. So we have so many uh, automobile brands like Toyota, Nissan, um, Benz, Audi, and Daihatsu. Um, likewise, so there are many uh, automobile brands uh, serving in the Sri Lankan uh, vehicle market or the automobile market. And uh, newcomer to this automobile industry is the Tesla. But compared to other uh, types of uh, automotives or the cars, uh, the Tesla company provides various other additional services to the customers. So they provide you know, the charging facilities and they provide maintenance facilities. So likewise, everything is provided by the um, company. So these services also makes uh, the product more competitive. It is very natural that if you buy a car, you would look for you know, the post sale services offered by the uh, company or the uh, seller. If there's more other services are associated with the purchase, you would definitely uh, look for such product. 
And uh, so think about um, some electronic items as well. Like if suppose you know, the television, uh, refrigerators, uh, the washing machines and uh, blenders and grinders, such sort of electronic products. So there are many types of uh, brands available in the market, but the product you buy would depend on the quality of the product, right? So suppose you want to buy a refrigerator, so you would look for the, the qualities of the refrigerator, so whether they are uh, free of ice, you know, the making and uh, electricity consumption and the capacity and the durability uh, and also the uh, the sale, the post sale uh, warranty and other services. Depending on this uh, information, you would decide what particular type of, or what particular brand of produce, uh, what particular brand of refrigerator you would buy. So this depends on the different types of services offered by the uh, particular producer. And uh, we noticed that uh, there's limited entry to uh, this type of industry. So anyone at any point can easily enter um, production uh, in such comp monopolistically competitive market. So um, barriers to entry, therefore, uh, uh, always we know that uh, when there's barriers to enter, enter um, it prevents the competitive pressure. Uh, in monopolistically monopolistic market, we know uh, there are so many barriers to enter such market. But here in the competitive, perfectly sorry, monopolistically competitive market, since there is no new entry barriers, anyone can easily enter the industry and starts you know producing the product and and earn a profit uh, by entering to the industry. And unlike monopolistic market, monopolistically competitive market keeps the property of uh, competition by allowing new producers to enter the industry. So when you see, for example, how the profit of the monopolistically competitive firm and profit of a competitive firm um, occurs. So this simple illustration explains you what's happening uh, to the profit of competitive firm and monopolistically competitive firm. So you will see to the right hand, sorry, the left hand side of your slide, um, the profits of monopolistically competitive firm and the right hand side illustrates the profit of a competitive firm. And you see here, uh, we know that the profit is the condition for profit maximization is the point where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. And at the point where marginal cost curve intersects with the marginal revenue, the respective output level is the output which maximizes the profit for the firm. In the first diagram, hence the marginal cost equals marginal revenue at output level one, Q1. Q1 is the output level where the marginal cost equals the marginal revenue. And that is the uh, particular profit maximizing output level. And and that uh, at that output, sorry, at that particular uh, production level, a uh, company having a price of P1, right? So that is we can find uh, from the point A. So extending a perpendicular to the point A to the uh, Y axis, we see the price is P1. Uh, similar to, uh, uh, you see that the demand curve here faced by the firm is different to the demand curve faced by the competitive firm. We know that 
the demand curve of the perfectly competitive firm is a horizontal line like this, why the producer cannot decide on how much they sell. Whatever they have, they may have to sell based on the available market price. Suppose the price is P, regardless of this producer produces Q or Q star or Q double star, whatever the amount, producers in the perfectly competitive market have to sell their products at available market prices. But compared to the uh, competitive market, in monopolistic market, firms demand curve is downward sloping curve, something like that. It's a downward sloping curve, but the demand curve of the competitive firm is a flat one, something like that. It's a flat one, but here it's downward sloping. So what does this indicate? If the company, you know, um, so the, 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 this, this indicates that uh, the based on the, uh, the market, based on the characteristics of the monopolistically competitive market, um, firm can decide the price and the quantity. If firm wants to you know, um, increase the price, so the firm can reduce the quantity. And if firm wants to decrease the price, uh, firm can increase the quantity. Likewise, by the operation of changing price and quantity, uh, monopolistically competitive firm has the liberty to change the price in, this, in the short run. Right. So here, uh, this highlighted area uh, shows the profit. Why? We know that um, when price is P1, this firm sells this much, which is Q1. Right. So this is the demand curve. And when the price is P1, the firm's demand is Q1. And it is also the profit maximizing point since uh, marginal revenue of the product equals the marginal cost. Therefore, a uh, firm would sell Q1 amount at P1 price. But when it comes to the cost of production, uh, here this average total cost curve, the curve of this um, light blue illustrates the how the cost of producing a unit varies with increasing output levels. Somewhere here, when the cost is this much, so when the cost is this much and the price is this much, the difference between price and the quantity is the profit from uh, one single product, so one single output. And therefore, when firm produces Q1, and when the cost is C, this lower part of the rectangle, sorry, uh, rectangle uh, shows the cost of the product, and upper part of the colored rectangle uh, shows the profit. Why? So this is the cost and this is the revenue. So the revenue minus cost is the profit. Profit is here. But you see the uh, situation in the monopoly, so the competitive firm. So they have marginal cost equal marginal revenue at this point, and this is the profit maximizing output. And when this firm produces Q star, it spends this much to produce an output because this is average total cost. And at this point, firm incurs 
this much of cost to produce a given output. Hence, this is the profit of the competitive firm. And we must notice that monopolistic competitive firm has the ability to change their profit based on you know the price and the quantity, but um, competitive firm do not have the ability to control the uh, profit, right? So they don't have the ability to control the profit and it is determined by the price provided by the market. Um, monopolistic, so this illustration um, shows you loss making in the perfect, so the monopolistically competitive firm. Right. You see, compared to the previous diagram here, the cost curve lies somewhere here, average total cost, average total cost, which is the cost of producing a unit of product, cost of producing a unit of product. See what happened to the average total cost here. So average total cost has been increased, has been increased. Firms profit maximizing output level happens at the intersection with, between marginal cost and the marginal revenue. Here is the intersection. And at that point, the production is Q1. And when you extend this to the point B, uh, the price is P1 and the firm's demand is Q1. Firm's demand is Q1. And since the cost of producing, the cost of production has been increased, when the firm produces Q1, C1 is the cost of producing a unit when firm produces Q1 quantity, uh, the cost of production per one unit is given in C, where it represents point A on the average total cost curve. Right. It's the point with here in the, uh, on, the, on the average total cost curve. So this is the price firm receives, but here is the cost firm incurs. And this is the output firm produces or sell. Hence, this area shaded in light blue represents the loss to the firm. Represents loss to the firm. Here the cost is higher than the price. So the difference is the extra cost of producing a unit and firm produces Q1 unit. And this difference multiplied by Q provides the firms, whether the firm is losing or um, profiting. So if you, if you can understand um, can you please tell me what are the possible reasons for monopolistically competitive mark, uh, firms' uh, average cost to be increased? What, what sort of uh, factors uh, could affect on raising the average total cost of monopolistic competitive firms? Examples? Any idea? Hello? Are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. So any idea why the uh, cost could increase in the monopolistically competitive firms? What could be the reason? So yeah. Yes, one of you can answer. 
so when considered the perfume manufacturer mm-hmm. and in input may be rare and high cost okay so that you know stream to the cost of production so what else exchange rate, change, change, changes in the exchange rate can increase the cost of production and the material cost can increase the cost of production right so these all involves in the uh, competitive firms as well so the material cost you know the exchange rate cost interest rate so they all adds to the cost of production what what else in addition you might see in the monopolistically competitive firm to increase the cost you can you can you, you, sorry yes advertising exactly. advertising exactly so that's the point actually so uh, in all the firms operates in any industry it irrespective of monopolistic competition competitive uh, competitive industry or monopolist industry whatever the industry all the industries have cost of production so this involves you know the material cost and uh, you know the um labor cost right and the operational cost and the cost of supplies like electricity telecommunication and management cost right so these all are involved in the production cost irrespective of the uh, type of industry right irrespective of whether the industry is a perfect competitive one or monopolistic one or oligopoly or monopoly industry these costs are common what is different in the monopolistically competitive firm is there are some extra cost coming into the picture that is the advertising cost right so monopolist the firms operate in the monopolistically competitive industry tries to promote their products using advertisements therefore advertisement cost adds to the cost of production and one point that the the average total cost can increase in monopolistically competitive firm is the presence of advertising cost when they do more and more advertising that will of course adds to the uh, cost of production and finally it would lift up the average total cost if they cut off some of the average average total cost this cost curve could go down and if they put more cost to the advertising this cost curve could go up right so therefore the it is important to know uh, the firms operate in the monopolistically competitive market so what what is the exact point what is the the right point to uh, stop their uh, marketing because marketing adds more cost and it determine the uh, profitability of the firm right right so <clears throat> so this this uh, illustration uh, demonstrates you uh, the normal profit of a, a monopolistically competitive firm you see that the average cost average total cost tangents to the uh, demand curve at this point right so this tangents to the uh, demand curve but they still do not producing at the uh, lowest average cost right so this point is not the average cost at the profit maximizing output q1 firms cost is somewhere here but we know we, we knew that in our discussion on competitive market the competitive when it when it comes to the uh, normal profit situation firms cost is at the minimum right so therefore the profit maximizing quantity should happen somewhere here at the minimum uh, average cost but compared to the competitive mark the firms in the competitive market monopolistically competitive firm in the monopolistically competitive industries never comes to this uh, minimum average cost so their cost is somewhere high here it's because of the advertising basically but when they have um, uh, 
uh, uh, cost equals to the price. Here the price is P1 and cost of producing Q1 amount, uh, the cost of producing one amount uh, or one unit at Q1 quantity is P1. So therefore the price and the cost, the price of a unit of a product and the cost of a unit of a product becomes equal at when they reach normal profit. So at this point, at this point when this uh, average total cost tangents to the demand curve of the firm, uh, profit is normal. It's not, you know, um, extra profit as we uh, learned in the previous slides. So now look at here what happens with the entry of uh, new firms. Right? So this is actually what happened with the entry of new firms. So um, some in, in case when there's, you know, the firm's um, demand is high than uh, D1 demand is the firm's ordinal demand. And when a new firms enter, the demand for this particular companies or this particular firm's product would decline. It is something like this. Uh, now suppose uh, um, when new brands come into the market, for example, think of television market. We had uh, very popular brands in the history, right? So like um, National, um, Sony, but later, uh, Toshiba came, came into the market and LG TVs came into the market. And now we have Triton um, and um, I don't know, so many um, uh, TCL likewise. So there are so many uh, TV brands available in the market. And when such brand comes into the market, the, the, the demand had by Sony products, for example, or the national products, for example, uh, could have been something like this. So their demand may have declined. Right? When new brands coming into the market or new products or new companies, uh, the, the demand for some companies' products uh, naturally go down or naturally reduce, uh, maybe due to many other uh, competitive reasons. So as a result, they are the firm's demand curve push backward. And this was the original demand curve. And this demand curve pushes towards um, left hand side. And at some point, uh, the firm reached to a place where they run at the operating profit or the uh, normal profit when their demand curve um, you know, touches the average total cost, right? Average total cost. So if they further, if, if their demand goes further down, suppose their demand curve lies, lies somewhere here, at that point, um, their price they receive are much lower than the cost they incurred in producing. So under that circumstances, this particular firm may have to go out of the market. So that could that would have been what happened to uh, some of the uh, TV products. So so do we have national TV so far, national brand, which is a very popular uh, brand before, and Sanyo TV, national TV. So do we have those products now? The reason for their exit ex 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 in the market or their disappearance in the market could be this. Right? So they, the demand for their product may have go down uh, compared to the cost they incurred in producing, the price they received for their products could have been very low. And naturally, when they at least do not earn normal profit and their demands are further low, and their cost is for up, up higher, um, this could result uh, these firms or these brands to 
you know, the exit from the market. So this could be the reason uh, some of the uh, popular brands which we had in the history are no longer operating in the market, right? So it's like um, Nokia phones. I don't know whether we have Nokia um, nowadays as well, but Nokia was the famous uh, mobile brand, mobile phone brand uh, in the early stage of mobile industry in Sri Lanka. But nowadays it has been, you know, overtaken by some other uh, brands. So the Nokia is no longer a popular brand. So likewise, um, when new, new, new firms or the new products enters the market, it, it makes a competition to the existing market, uh, existing firms. And when the competition is intense, uh, some of the brands uh, would fail to produce at the least cost and they might incur losses. So result would be ejection from the industry. So they may have to go out of the industry because uh, they, they, they can't uh, exit, ex sorry, exist producing in the existing market as long as they do not earn at least a normal profit. So <clears throat> at the equilibrium, particularly in the long run, um, the monopolistically, the firms in the monopolistically competitive market also ends up with zero profit. So as I explained to you, many firms enter the industry and as a result, it, uh, it makes a competition to existing industries and they have to you know, uh, put their prices down to uh, compete with other firms and they can go furthest until the, 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 the cost of production equals the price. So if the prices fall further below the cost of production, uh, such firms would exit from the industry because they cannot commit further production. So if you, if you think of uh, um, some of um, agricultural uh, the products, right? So in the history, we had um, so many rice millers, but nowadays there's, I'm, I'm just talking about the rice milling industry, not the whole rice industry. I just, just talking about the rice milling industry. We had so many rice millers, the small scale, medium scale and large scale rice millers. But now um, with the uh, emergence of uh, branded price, right? Branded price. Uh, some of, not actually some, most of the uh, small and medium scale rice millers uh, have shut down their rice mills because they couldn't compete with the competition put upon by the large scale millers because they, they, they can't compete with the quality, they can't compete with the technology and uh, they, they, because of various reasons, various other reasons, uh, the small and medium millers could, have, could not have been able to um, sustain in the competition. The result was uh, shutting down of a uh, large number of uh, small and medium rice mills in, the, in, in Sri Lanka. So these are some examples uh, where this uh, lack of normal profit uh, ejects or take away some of the firms from the industry. Right, so this, this particular figure uh, presents you what is mean by this uh, normal profit in the monopolistically competitive industry. And you see that um, marginal revenue and marginal cost intersection sets the profit maximizing output that is QM. And it is the output at normal profit because uh, this average total cost curve tangents to the demand curve. It tangents to the demand curve. At this point, uh, the price of the 
uh, product is exactly the cost of producing that product, right? The price of the product is exactly the cost of producing that product. And um, we don't have difference between price and the cost. Therefore, uh, at a point where uh, the demand curve of the monopolistic competi competitive firm tangents to the average total cost oils, simply when the demand uh, or, or, or the, sorry, the, the price of a product of monopolistically competitive firm uh, equals to the cost of the product, it brings the normal profit for the monopolistic competitive firm. This is different to the uh, competitive firm. If you recall your memory, um, this tangency happens at the minimum cost uh, of production somewhere here. Because we know that uh, monopolist can decide on product, the quantity and the price. Um, so they they have the ability to because they have the ability to control price and uh, quantity, so they can you know the control the output hence so they never come to the uh, minimum average uh, cost of production. So always they try to differentiate their product. So therefore they do advertising and or other uh, types of. Uh, uh, mechanisms, basically the advertising. And since they involve advertising to make their products different to the other products in the market, the cost of the cost of producing the firm's product never comes to minimum. So you need to remember that, or just keep in mind that um, monopolistically competitive firms, cost of production never comes to the uh, minimum average cost it's because they have the their products are different and they can control the output uh, by various mechanisms like uh, advertising so the advertising adds uh, cost to the firm's output and as a result uh, the firm's cost of production remains uh, at a higher place than the uh, competitive firm right so In the long run, so it is interesting character that both uh, monopoly, uh, monopolistic competition and competitive firms uh, makes normal profit in the long run. However, it is important to note that uh, monopolistic competitive firm still, still can make economic profit in the long run. But we learned in competitive industries, firms in the competitive industry cannot make economic profits in the long run. But here in competitive, monopolistically competitive market, the firms operating in monopolistically competitive market have the opportunity to still earn uh, economic profits in the long run. Right, so uh, you just uh, see this illustration and I will uh, explain uh, or I try to uh, compare between um, monopolistic competition and the perfect competition uh, in terms of uh, long run economic profits. Um, don't be confused of uh, different uh, graphs uh, comes across in the um, picture or the diagram. If you um, simply refer to the uh, uh, keys here, here the uh, MC reflects um, the monopolistic competition, right? MC is the monopolistic competition. PC is the perfect competition, right? PC is perfect competition. 
So regardless of the uh, operating industry, irrespective of whether the industry is perfectly competitive or monopolistically competitive, they have their own marginal cost, the firm's marginal cost, and the average cost. But what is different between two firms operating in two industries are the demand and hence are the profit or the price. So you see here, um, we learned that Perfectly competitive firm's demand curve is downward sloping one, something like this. And its marginal revenue is this, because we know the revenue of the firm is the demand multiplied by the price. And marginal revenue is the derivative of the uh, revenue, right? So derivative of the revenue, hence, uh, Marginal revenue is a slope more steeper, but below the uh, demand curve of the firm. So this is the marginal revenue of the monopolistically competitive firm, right? And um, here, firm operates in the competitive industry, faces a horizontal demand curve. <clears throat> horizontal demand curve. Firm's demand curve is horizontal because uh, whatever the quantity a firm has, has to sell according to the market price, right? PPC is the market price faced by the perfectly competitive firm and it is the, it is the market price. So this firm operates in the competitive market has to offer the product to sell at available market prices. This is something like this. Um, suppose the rice producer, rice producer, since the rice producer cannot determine on the market price, irrespective of the producer produces 1,000 kilograms or 2,000 or 10,000 or 100,000, whatever the amount they produce, they had to sell according to the available market price. Nowadays, the price of wet rice is around 100, 105 rupees. So that is the price that every farmer have to sell their product. So therefore, irrespective of uh, whether the farmer produces 1,000 or 2,000 or 10,000, so they have to sell at the given price. If the price is 110 rupees, every farmer, every producer have to sell at that price, right? So that is why the uh, firm's demand curve is a horizontal curve like that. And we knew that the marginal revenue of the perfectly competitive firm is also the demand curve. Right? It is also the demand curve because marginal revenue uh, is the price. We knew that, right? Marginal revenue uh, is the price, which is the first derivative of the uh, revenue curve. And uh, so when we analyze this, you might see uh, perfectly competitive firms normal profit exist, so exit at QPC. So this is the point where uh, the, the amount of production, amount of output, where competitive firm earns normal profit, why at this output, firm's cost of production has reached the minimum and it also equals to the price or the uh, marginal revenue of the product. So therefore, this is the point where 
normal profit happens in the competitive firm. So look at the quantity of uh, monopolistically competitive firm, right? So monopolistically competitive firm reaches the um, normal profit when their demand curve touches the average total cost curve. And here it is that point, and they never come to the minimum cost level. It's because these firms have cost on advertising. They have cost on advertising. Therefore, um, the, the cost of uh, producing one unit always higher than cost of producing one unit in the competitive firm. And on the other hand, since they have monopolistic character, so they can decide on the higher price and they reduce the, the amount, of, amount of output as well. So at the uh, normal profit or the, um, where the cost equals to the price, the output produced by the, by, by the monopolistically competitive firm remains below the uh, output produced by the uh, perfectly competitive firm. So you see that they have a still higher price than the uh, perfectly competitive firm's price. This is very uh, important character here, um, always, monopolistically competitive firms, even for similar product, can charge a higher price, right? So in monopolistic competition, one thing that we need to know, in the long run, prices remains always over the minimum average total cost. So the minimum average total cost is here, but the price of monopolistically competitive firm, the price is above the minimum average cost, right? So they never comes to equal, but in the, mono, in, in the competitive or the perfectly competitive firm, price becomes equals to the uh, minimum average total cost. Right? In the perfect, perfect competitive uh, firm, we know that price equals the minimum average total cost. So what happens at the end, um, always output of monopolistic competitive firm lies below the uh, output of competitive firm in the long run. And this is something you need to you know, uh, keep in mind. Uh, this indicates that still, uh, monopolistically competitive firms remain some inefficiencies because they never goes to the level of output that at the normal profit in the long run as similar to the uh, mono, as similar to the uh, competitive firm right so competitive firms always produce higher outputs at normal profit but monopolistically competitive firm do not produce such a high output at normal profit. So the output is always uh, is less than the competitive firm's output. So this, impl this implies some implications or this uh, suggests some implications on the efficiency. So when, this, when the profit is normal, Monopolistically competitive firms produces a low amount of output compared to the uh, competitive firms, which indicates that there are certain inefficiencies because when it is normal profit, that is the ever possible lowest average cost a, a firm produces. Um, and that, that's the maximum output that the firm can produce at the lowest cost, but monopolistically competitive firm never goes to that level. So they always produces something less than the perfectly competitive firms at the uh, long run at normal profit, which means 
they still have some economic profit and they cannot um, you know, use resources efficiently. So these mo monopolistic competitive firms in terms of resource use efficiency, in terms of allocating resources are not a better as far as as compared to the um, as compared with competitive firms because competitive output is always higher and in the long run uh, the output the price of the output they produce equals to the price uh, the the um, cost of producing the output but in the competitive monopolistically competitive firms uh, the price is above the competitive price, cost is above the competitive cost in the normal profit in the long run. Um, this suggests the possibilities of existing um, inefficiencies in the production process. And this is particularly relevant because these firms have um, advertising costs. So that's, that's why uh, these firms always um, have higher cost, right? If we compare the monopolistic competition with the monopoly, so we can do the same analysis. So uh, the monopolists have the, so we will discuss this uh, maybe next, next week when we discuss monopoly. So you'll be able to compare the characteristics among uh, um, uh, different forms of uh, market structures. Uh, in the monopolistically competitive uh, firm is similar to uh, monopoly um, in terms of their ability to make economic profits in the long run, right? In monopoly, uh, we, we know, uh, we will learn there are barriers to enter right, barriers to enter. And similarly, um, in monopolistically competitive firm, um, though not uh, there are barriers to um, enter, um, they still can, the, 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 the new, new firms still can come into the market, uh, but, at certain uh, certain level of barriers exist in terms of uh, you know uh, the product differentiation, so the quality differentiation, right? So all the products or the all the firms in monopolistically competitive firms may not be able to produce at the uh, same quality, right? So the monopolistic competitor um, in the long run. Um, they have a price, they could have a price which is equal to the average total cost, but it is always above the uh, marginal revenue or it is always above the marginal cost. So compared to the um, perfectly competitive firms, so if you recall, they have the, the, in, the in the long run, when, the, when the, the profit is normal, the price was equal to the average total cost, marginal cost equal to the average total, average, average total cost, and marginal revenue also equal to the average uh, total uh, cost. So, so here is an example. So if you recall, this is the price of the perfectly competitive firm, and it is equal to the average total cost, right? And it is equal to the marginal cost, and also it is equal to the marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is the, uh, the demand curve of the uh, perfectly competitive firm. So you see that uh, this demand curve of the competitive firm intersects marginal cost, average total cost, and the price, everything at one point, everything at one point. But here, in the monopolistically competitive market, marginal revenue and marginal cost intersects at this point, which is QMC output, and price equals to average total cost happens at this point. Right? Price equals to average total cost happens at this point, 
marginal revenue equals to marginal cost happens at this point. So that is why we say um, this inequality, the price equals to average total cost point is remaining above the uh, marginal cost equals marginal revenue. So this equality always remains lower to the uh, above equality. Price equal average total cost equality is uh, above the marginal cost equals marginal revenue uh, equality. And uh, when the advertise when when we consider the advertising, uh, we know that uh, in the mono in, in the perfectly competitive firms, there's no incentive to advertise because all products are identical. But in monopolistic competition, there's incentive for advertising. As much as they advertise, they will be able to you know the differentiate their product and gain a higher volume of uh, sale for their, the products uh, of monopolistically competitive market. So the reason for advertising in the monopolistically competitive market is to increase the demand. So you see when you sit in front of a television, uh, see what sort of advertisements are going on for what products. So this all makes, uh, or, or this all tries to uh, make product differentiation uh, in the market, in the in the minds of uh, consumers, right? In the minds of consumers, so all the firms tries to place their products different to other competitive firms in the mind of uh, uh, consumers. So this is not very common in agriculture, but there are some instances we see. Um, monopolistic competition, particularly the products like, you know, the sausages, uh, products like yogurt and products like cheese and biscuits, for example. So these are some of the uh, products which operates in monopolistically competitive market. So these products and, and ice creams, for example, the producers of these products tries to make many advertisements to differentiate the products from their competitor. So that's why when you sit on front of the, uh, the uh, sit in front of the television, you will see um, even the product is similar, the same, like ice cream is ice cream, but the different firms advertises um, these products differently. And when you consider ice creams, it also has many varieties. So the flavored ice creams, right? Pure vanilla ice cream, chocolate ice cream, likewise. So still you see some differences and quality differences as well. So when you see ice creams, you in your mind as well, by, by, by experience, perhaps you have certain, you know, the registered brands in your mind. So you have a preference to some of the ice cream brands compared to the others. So therefore, uh, such products are different in the market and this uh, differentiation creates in terms of advertising these the, the firms operates in the perfect monopolistically competitive market always involves advertising and therefore the um, there's a cost for it uh, advertising always increases the average total cost so that is why so we see here they even the, in the in the long run at point where the firms operated normal profit, uh, the, the, the average cost doesn't come into the minimum in the monopolistically competitive market. The average cost is higher in the monopolistically competitive market. It is because mainly the uh, advertising expenses. So there's advertising cost and advertise, advertising cost increases average total cost of monopolistically uh, competitive market. And there's non-price competition uh, in the monopolistically competitive market as well. Uh, it is because uh, they try to, the, the, the monopolistically competitive firms tries to uh, position the, their products differently to the rival's product. 
and and this differentiation uh, creates you know um, some um, the brands uh, it inculcates some uh, you know the qualities among the in, in the consumer's mind uh, it, it to recognize that the products are not similar or not same right so advertising for example makes to differentiate product so in your mind you may have an experience or um, intrusion that uh, elephant house ice cream are better than you know um, cargill's or uh, cargill's ice creams are better than elephant house or something like that this is the image that was created uh, by the experience and it is also by the advertisement so the ice cream is ice cream but you different you differentiate between the rivals product and you differentiate different qualities of the product so that you differentiate one ice cream offered by the uh, firms uh, different to the other ice cream offered by another firm so this this is the non price competition so uh, even at the same price uh, firms offers different product right so how this differentiation creates in the mind of uh, consumers it's by uh, quality or it may be by reliability color different styles different features uh, the product packaging product deliveries and uh, you know the terms and conditions of uh, purchase and by offering warranties or the guarantees and location they uh, you know they offer the product um, or the availability or the frequency of availability or likewise um, many features adds to the product of uh, perfectly competitive uh, products offered by firms in the monopolistically competitive market right so for example, uh, you know, you think that uh, some companies, you know, for example, if you're going to buy a refrigerator, uh, some companies offers, you know, the home delivery services. So these are extra um, features adds to, add, added to the product. And so the product is different now. Uh, even the fridge, are, have, there are uh, many brands of fridge. Uh, some brands offer you home delivery services or some brands offer you, you know, the warranties, or some brands offer you guarantees. So likewise, um, or the, the difference, different periods of guarantees, when someone offers you one year, other product maybe offers you two years warranty. Likewise, um, this is how the differentiation created in the minds of consumer, right? So therefore, ultimately, advertising occurs in the monopolistically competitive market establishes brands um, in the name of uh, consumers. So it is not a simple, uh, you know, the homogeneous product It's a differentiated product and it's a branded product. So the advertising therefore shift the demand curve of uh, firms operating in monopolistically competitive industry to the right hand side and it makes more inelastic. So therefore, um, always why firms in the monopolistically competitive uh, industry involves in advertising, the reason is they try to shift their demand curve. They try to increase the demand for their products in the market. Right? So, and in the meantime, advertising increases the uh, average total cost um, and it more uh, curvature. Right, so a simple question for you to uh, think of or reflect on, does advertising help or hurt society? Right, so there is a sense of uh, trust in uh, buying brands we know. So if consumers willing to you know the pay for differences, uh, it's a benefit to the uh, society. So we can, you know, someone can argue that uh, whether advertising uh, helps uh, consumers to uh, choose the right product. Um, it's not always 
re, uh, true, but um, in most cases, it's true. Uh, some of the ad, some of the, the products advertising um, provides consumers more information about the the pro the, the about the product they choose and the qualities uh, embed in such product. So this helps consumers to figure out differences. And if the consumers happy with the different difference offers by some of the firms, of course, it's a benefit to the society. So this is what actually happens when uh, advertising goes on. So the uh, advertising helps uh, firms to shift their firm's demand curve to the right and to make it more elastic. So just look at the slope of the demand curve. So compare to the slope of this demand curve, this demand curve is more inelastic. So it is it is less, it is more slope compared to this, which means it is becoming less elastic. So which means um, the the percentage change of quantity with respect to percentage change in price is very low. So that is the nature. So this indicates that um, when, when making advertisements or when advertising, companies tries to uh, make a fix, make, make, make a, a, um, a picture in the consumer's mind as their product is the best product, right? So if every consumer prefers and assume and believe the product offered by one company is the best product, what eventually happened, all the consumers moves, moves to buy the product, the respective or the particular product offered by that company only. Now it's like something like this. Now suppose no no you know uh, the advertising leads to create in mind among uh, people or the consumers Sony TVs are the best TVs so eventually there will be many many Sony television consumers or users compared to the other brand so this would ultimately leads firms to you know have the control over the television market and they have they gain more control on the price and they can change the price as they wish because all the consumers are uh, affiliated to their product all the consumers um, you know uh, love using uh, their product so this this finally end up with an inelastic demand curve for the firm and firm has the uh, the whole the sole right to uh, change the price as they wish. So that is how the brand names created, right? So as, as it is created, the brand has a value. And when the brand name is created, uh, the product become inelastic. So there are so many examples in the sports industry for and, and clothing industry, for example, particularly the sports industry. And you see that there's uh, many very established brands like Nike, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, um, then um, uh, what else? So there are uh, such like uh, the brands in NB likewise. So there are shoes as well offered by um, those brands. And these products are very specific. And when you hear about, hear the, hear the name, you know, Adidas or Under Armour, um, you know the quality of the product associated with them. So therefore, uh, there are many, uh, you know, brand loyal customers for such product. And ultimately, um, since they have uh, such huge number of consumers, and since they are quality specific, they get the liberty to, you know, the chain, the price and quantity as they wish. Right, so it is something like that. So, but uh, we don't see much of such uh, market control by monopolistically competitive firms in the agriculture industry. Um, though we have some products like yogurt, uh, curd, um, processed meat, and meatballs, sausages, uh, canned fish. So these are 
some examples for this uh, monopolistically competitive product, but none of the uh, uh, brands are not having such a great image among consumers mind. Perhaps uh, in terms of, for example, the uh, sausages, maybe people believe the keels are the best, I don't know, but there are some brands, but they still don't have that much influence like uh, some other very recognized uh, clothing brands um, like uh, Adidas and uh, uh, NB uh, like brands, right? So this, uh, the brand uh, loyalty creates with the uh, experience consumers has with product. When people consume a product, so they build up, uh, then they, they taste the product. So, and they know the quality of the product finally become uh, loyal to the brand. So when a company has more loyal consumers, um, they have uh, higher power to control the market. Okay, so with this, um, I wish to conclude uh, our discussion on uh, monopolistically uh, competitive market. And there we try to understand um, what they are and their characteristics. So under what circumstances monopolistically competitive market operates and their ability to you know, the control the price and the quantity and um, differences between monopolistically competitive firm and a competitive firm in terms of normal profits in the long run. And we learn a monopolistically competitive firm never comes to the uh, lowest average total cost of production um, compared to the uh, competitive firm. So the competitive firm always in the long run uh, reduces uh, or comes to the minimum average cost of production and they earn normal profit, but the monopolistically competitive firm earns um, economic profits in the long run as well. Though there's no barriers to enter, uh, we have we noticed that um, still uh, monopolistically competitive firms tries to be like monopolist firms in terms of differentiation of their product and basically this differentiation takes uh, or, or created uh, through advertising and advertising therefore adds extra cost to the uh, mark the firm's product so if it is a yogurt producing company uh, in addition to the cost of production of yogurt, uh, such companies have to have advertise, advertisements and advertisements adds to the uh, total cost. Hence the average cost increases and compared to the, the competitive firm, uh, monopolistical competitive firms have more advertising cost. And also these uh, advertisements uh, helps to create brand loyalty among customers and advertisement helps firms to push their demand curve up and more inelastic, finally, until they get um, a large portion of customers as their loyal customers. So this is what we have discussed. And um, I have um, given some um, interesting research articles here. So if you get a chance, you just uh, go to Google Scholar and try to uh, search and read some of these um, articles in order to you know, have some additional uh, idea about what this market are, what their characteristics and uh, how the efficiency uh, is changed in such markets likewise. So with this, um, I wish to uh, uh, conclude today so okay so there's a message asking uh, can you upload ppt and recordings while limits yeah so i will try to uh, upload the presentation and the uh, recording actually uh, i tried to upload last time recording but because of the capacity issues uh, i couldn't do that i will try to find an alternative mechanism perhaps uh, i can upload that to a youtube channel and i will send the link so however i will uh, try to figure out a mechanism to upload um, recordings to, and also uh, I will upload uh, presentations of last week and this week. Okay, sorry, the not, not last week. So last last week so we couldn't uh, meet last week, 
um i'm i wish to uh, have an additional time with you at some stage so i will uh, talk to amir uh, to have um extra time uh, for our class that we missed last last week okay so with this um, i stop here for today and uh, i wish you all a nice weekend uh, rest of the sunday would be um, a nice one thank you everyone so if you have any question just um, thank you sir. okay uh, drop me a message if you have questions okay thank you thank you very much sir thank you sir okay thank you bye